Hello and welcome to part 3 of my door series in Unreal Engine 4. Previously we made a proximity door which opened when the player got near it. Secondly we worked on a similar concept but this time the player needed to push a key on their controller or keypad or keyboard sorry. And finally we're now going to do a keycard door so a door that requires a particular pickup like a keycard before it can open. So this one is the most advanced one. Um, I highly recommend that you do the first two before this as we're going to move on with the same code as we have previously uh, done before. Okay, so let's begin. So the keycard door, let me show how it works, has a few added tricks to it. So if I click on the door and go into the details panel, you can see here I've made a, my own detail section here, keycard required. And here I can determine which keycard is required by the player. And the keycard here allows me to enter a corresponding value. So that means I can make this keycard open up all the same doors. So if I wanted them to be color coded, I can be and make them all color coded. Um, or can make them individual so that keycard only opens up that door. Okay, so it's quite flexible and really easy to get going uh, into. Uh, a level. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is we have to make a new actor for our keycard, um, which we'll do now. So click on add new in your content browser, blueprint class, actor, and you want to name this one keycard. Uh, I've already got it existing because I've already made it. So keycard blueprint. And I'm going to open it up. Okay, so we've got a blank, uh, a blank uh, actor. So similar to how we've done the door before, I'm going to add some components to it. So the first component I'm going to add is a static mesh, which is the 3D model of the keycard. Uh, similarly, with the door, I'm going to give you the model that I've used, but by all means, you can use whatever the hell you want. So keycard mesh, like so. And as before, nothing will show because we haven't set what static mesh we want it to have. So over here, I've already imported mine. So uh, you import yours and I've applied mine there. And here it is. Okay. Um, don't know why it's come up with that material, but it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, so there is my key card. I'm going to raise it off the ground a little bit. Okay, that means it will hover a little bit. Uh, a little bit off the ground. If it's above this circle, it means it's going to hover a little bit, which is what I want. Uh, next up, I need to make a collision mesh. Uh, sorry, not a mesh, a collision uh, box. So type in box, collision. And you can see the box appear again. So I'm going to scale this down and move it so it's over the key card roughly. It doesn't have to be exact because the player is a big thing and it will walk right through this and pick up no problem. Um, we don't need to separate the box and the mesh out because they're not moving away from each other, they're always staying together so it doesn't really matter. And for added effects I like to put on a rotating movement on my pickup so it makes it nice and clear that hey player you can pick me up. So click on add component and go rotating movement. And there it is. So rotating movement, If you, you can see if it works by clicking the simulation button up the top here. And you can see it rotate. It's just a nice effect. Um, I tend to like it. You don't have to do that though. It's not essential. Okay. Um, one last thing to do for setup is we need to create a variable to determine what keycard this is. Okay. So to add a variable, in the right, left hand side you'll see a variables drop down box. Okay. And you'll see a little plus icon in the corner of it. Click this and you can name your variable. So my one is going to be called keycard underscore value. And with that selected, go to your details panel for your variable. Okay. Now by default, it will be down as a Boolean. Uh, we don't want it as a Boolean because, um, well, it's not a Boolean. Okay. A Boolean is a true or false statement. What we want is an integer. So click on integer in the drop down box and an integer is a whole number. Okay. So to get it to show up in our details panel so we can set it while we're building a level, click on this editable 
tick box and that now show in the details panel when we uh, place it into our world and click compile okay right that's our key card ready to go we just need to uh, code it to be picked up so before we get to that though uh, we need to make it so it's able for the player to pick this up and for the player to remember what was the key card value of the key this key card that it just picked up keep in mind your world could be filled with these things um, you can have as many as you like really um, so you need to make sure the player can remember which one they picked up so we're going to close this temporarily we're going to come back to that soon and you want to find the player controller uh, not player controller the uh, first person character actor so I'm going to go into first person bl uh, blueprint folder, go to blueprints and first person character. Uh, now I've already got it in here, so I'll delete that. So you can put it in there again from scratch. And uh, this is the character blueprint for the first person example. Okay, so if you're using your own project, you will have your own uh, player character. Um, but nonetheless, you just get open up the actor that is the player character. Okay and you want to make a new variable for the player character so click on the little plus symbol again and you want to name this one um, key cards so this one we want to keep as a boolean okay and we want to change it though from a normal variable to an array and to do that next to this drop down on the left on the right hand side in the details panel click on this icon here and you get another drop down and the one you want is the one that says array which is the grid of uh, nine squares click this and that is now an array so an array is essentially a list okay a, a, a list that is storing different values so this is a boolean array so it's going to have a list of true and false statements click compile and you can now on the right hand side in details add as many key cards as you like so i can have if i have three key cards in my world be collected i would add three options i've got zero one and two okay so how many however many key cards you won't be able to be collected in the world you make that list here okay so i've got three and you can always delete some oh uh whatever you like so I've only got one, I'm just going to do one for now, but um, you do however many you need to do, okay? And click compile, and that's done. You can close that out. So the way this works is that when the player walks over the key card, the game will look at what key card value is, go into that array, and make it true, okay? Currently it's all false, so it'll look for in that array, that list, and look at, okay, have they collected zero, one, two, and it'll be yes, no, no, yes, whatever. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Arrays I know can be a little bit confusing for people that are not used to them or haven't really done anything with them before. Um, but hopefully uh, this makes sense. I'm trying to explain it as best I can. So anyway, back to our key card. So go back to your key card blueprint and open it up. And now we're going to code onto here uh, the action of adding to that array so we don't need any of this stuff we can delete that and you want to click on the box component right click begin overlap and on begin component overlap and box so very similar to the door we want to cast it to the first person character first first person character and hook up other actor to the object okay so once again cast basically checks whether or not the thing that's overlapped this key card is the first person character because you don't want your enemies walking over it and picking it up you want the player to pick it up okay so now we've got the player we need to tell the player what key card this was okay and add it to that list so um as first person character, you want to drag that out and type in get key cards. And this is that array we just made. Okay, so we need to make that first to be able to see this. So this retrieves that list. Okay, so this just gets that list for us. 
and from that list you want to drag that out and type in insert like so so an insert is going to look at that list and it's going to insert a value that we want anywhere in that list okay so we're going to hook the execute up to the insert we want to tick this is true because once we kick, picked up the key card we're going to say yes you've got it it's true yes 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 so tick that off but this value zero this is the index so this is the number of that list remember where if you had three you'll see what zero one and two um zero is the first one in that list okay and we want that to be this key card value so to do that click and drag key card value onto your blueprint and and select get and you can hook that up sorry and then hook that up to that pin so this will now uh, look at the key cards array and add a true to whatever key card value this is okay so if this was one it'll look in that list for list uh, item one and tick it off okay and once we've done that we want to destroy the actor the key card actor because we don't want it in the world anymore to give the illusion that the player actually picked it up so come off of insert and do destroy actor and that's it and that's your key card done okay so i'll re recap begin overlap with the box cast the first person character to check that there is the player walking over it get the player's key card uh key card array and insert a true into the key card value slot and then destroy it click compile and you can close it so that's the key card done so all now we've got to do is make the door so the door we're going to copy and paste uh the previous one we made the button door so find what the last one we've done in the previous episode right click on it and duplicate and name this one accordingly door underscore key card excellent okay and open it up and here's the code we've done last episode so once again we need to break something off here uh, before this will work okay so we want to keep this exactly the same this bit and this bit is exactly the same the bit that will be breaking off is this cast a first person character and enable input so we're not going to we're going to basically say to the door don't enable input if the key card isn't there if the if key card has been picked up by the player so alt click on the pin to disconnect it and I'm going to select these two off and move them out okay so with this now done we need to get uh, the key card value of the player and match it to the door key card value now currently the door doesn't have a key card value so we need to add one so go to variables click on the plus symbol and name it key card underscore value and you want to change it from a boolean to an integer and tick editable so editable again means that it'll be uh, I can change it in the editor as I'm building a level which is what I want okay so I'll um, begin overlap to cast a first, first person character uh, we now want to get that key cards list so drag off a first person character get key cards so now we've got the key card list of the player that's walked through it excellent so now we're going to see through that list we're going to sift through it and check whether or not the key card value that matches this door is true so for that we're going to do a for each loop so come off of the cast and type in for each and you'll see a for each loop and you'll see it requires an array and hey presto we have an array to give it so link that up to that so a for each loop what it does it will cycle through and loop through all elements of the list all parts of the list so if your list is five times long it'll go through all five elements of that list what we want to do is loop around and check for the one that matches the keycard value of our door and check whether or not it's true so on the loop body we're going to come off of there and do a branch and a branch 
uh, it's an if statement. So it basically says if the condition is true, come off of here. If it's false, come off of here. It's that simple, really. And you want the true to hook up to enable input. So I'm just going to move this all along so it looks a bit neater. Your OCD kicking in there. Okie dokie. So we've got the branch. We just need to get this condition out of it. Okay. So the condition we're looking for is we're going to look at the array and see whether or not it's true or false based on this keycard value. So um, with the um, oh my mine's gone blank. Do, do, do. Right, yes. So you want to get the value. Yeah, keycard value. You want to get this, and you want to check for array index is matching keycard value. So array index equals integer. So what this does, it'll loop for uh, and look for the array index that matches the keycard value. So if the keycard value of the door is zero, and that means this will come off as true on the first loop round. Probably not explaining myself very well, but hopefully you guys are following me, following along uh, hopefully well enough. So if that is comes off as true, so if that is equal to that and it's true, we want to also check whether or not the element of it is true as well. So you do an and boolean, move this to the side, and I'm going to hook that up to the bottom one and hook the array element to the top one and then hook that up to the branch. So this will look for the keycard value that matches uh, the array index. So if it's zero, it's zero, and it comes off as true. And it's going to look for whether or not the element of that array index is true or false. If it's true, then this will come off. So an and, both of these have to be true for this to come back as true. And which then files off down as true line. If this comes back as false, meaning that you don't have the key card yet, then this will spit out false. Meaning that now, no, it, the door won't enable the input. It won't do anything. And you could, if you like, bring on here a warning message saying need key card first or whatever. But we're not going to bother with that for today. Um, and that's it really, and it should hopefully work. So I'm going to close it, um, and go back to my start and quickly plant it in the world. So key cards I'll put on the world floor there. And my door I'm going to put over here. So you can see in the details panel for both the door and the key card, they both have a key card value uh, number I can assign to them. Okay, so if I were to click play, this door shouldn't open. I push E, which doesn't, which is good. So I should be able to pick up this key card, so it disappears. Walk up to this door, push E, and it works. Hey presto. Now to show you what happens if you change the key card value. So if my key card value is now one, this now does not match that door. So I can walk over, pick up that key card, but if I walk up to this door. It won't work okay so you need to have them matching for the door to open so what that means is now i can add loads of doors and loads of key cards and make certain key cards open up certain doors and so on and so forth without any issues and that's basically it for our door to uh, tutorial um that's three episodes in um i hope that you follow along and it made sense and you learned a lot uh, we're going to go into a bit more detail stuff later down the line. Uh, if you do get stuck and don't know how, how to fix it, please leave a comment. I'll try and get back to you uh, with a response of how to, how to fix it or make a new video. Uh, plus, if you want uh, certain videos made, you want to know how to do certain things, just drop us a comment uh, below this video and let me know and I'll uh, review it and see if we can make a video uh, uh, to solve whatever you want to make. Okay, And that's it. For, that'll do for today. If you like this, please like the video and up, upvote it, share it and subscribe, leave some comments, uh, let me know if you like this sort of thing and uh, catch you again next time.